Okay, I'll I will get started then. So um, first of all, um, thank you very much for um, everybody for for coming. It's it's great to see you. Um, we have got a nice uh, little webinar set up for everybody um, today, and um, what we're going to do is to go through um, a series of um, people talking about um, this uh, this this topic area, and then we're going to have some questions. And hopefully the audience uh, audience members will um, you know get involved and we'll have a bit of a discussion as well. So um, this is all about staying active with dementia. Um, so we've got uh, again some good speakers here. So we will kick off um, in a, in just a few seconds time, but we hope to be finishing at about um, three o'clock and um, to uh, um to get to get going and we'll make sure that we, we finish on time so I'll, I'll try to keep sure make sure everybody um finishes on time we've been researching um uh, dementia for a, uh, quite a while now since 2014 and we've been looking at mild to moderate dementia in the community so it's people who live um in the community with dementia and what we've been trying to do is follow them over time so we've recruited about 1500 people with dementia and their carers and what we do is assess uh, how they're going with various by various means um, around about each each year in order to see how people get on and to sort of to try and monitor any changes in their lives and how they're feeling and how how things progress. So that's the the, the main the main focus of what we've been trying to do um, with this project. So like uh, I mentioned earlier, there there are seven presentations. Um, sorry, five presentations that, that will be given, and, and they're about seven minutes each. And, and the people who we have speaking today are Professor Christina Victor from Brunel University. Um, we have Emma Quake from Dementia Active Gwynedd. Hopefully I pronounced your, your name correctly. Is that about right? Hopefully. Thank you very much, Emma. Uh, Bronte Heath uh, from the Alzheimer's Society, a Senior Research Evidence Officer from the Alzheimer's Society. And last but not least, we have Jane Ward, who is a member of our Always group. I'm sure, Jane, you'll introduce yourself and give a bit of a background about who you are as well. And that'd be, that'd be fantastic. But we've got a really great array of speakers today. So hopefully you should um, find this very interesting. So with no further ado, um, let's get started um, with the speakers. So I will let Christina kick off with her first, uh, her first little bit of discussion. <laughs> Yeah, a, a little bit of discussion probably summarises it, it quite nicely. So I'm just going to give a few headline findings from a, a sister project to the IDEAL project, which was around looking at physical activity for people with dementia. And with my colleagues from uh, Brunel, Louise Mansfield and, and Neil O'Connell, uh, we were very uh, fortunate to get some funding from the Alzheimer's Society to look at, I think, th three things. How active are people with dementia and how is that different from the general population? Um, how effective are interventions to increase physical activity amongst uh, people with uh, dementia? And then um, what are the uh, what are the sort of lived experiences? What what are the views of people with dementia and their carers? as to the, the benefits from um, engaging in physical activity. So those are the three things I'm going to hopefully briefly cover, but um, I never somehow managed to be brief. So the context for this is, you know, physical activity is um, seen as being um, a good thing. It's a well-established public health intervention. Physical activity can confer a range of health benefits from increased life expectancy, uh, physical and mental health, um, prevent or uh, mitigate some um, specific diseases, and also uh, promotes um, general uh, well-being. And particularly for older adults, physical activity is is a is a is has additional kinds of benefits in terms of. Uh, being linked to falls prevention by um, increasing strength, muscle strength and balance and also facilitating activities of, of daily living. So 
we we undertook this review and i guess the context for this if we're talking about physical activity the government like so many areas of our lives offers guidance as to what degree or what amount of physical activity is seen to be the threshold for benefit for older adults and that's either 150 minutes a, a week of moderate exercise or 75 minutes a week of vigorous exercise so um, where your heart rate is is elevated and uh, you breathe a bit heavily and also that um, we should twice a week do strength and balance exercises and then also at the same time as trying to increase physical activity we have the um, the parallel activity of trying to reduce the amount of time that we are sedentary. So both in the actual amount of time we are sedentary, but also the uh, episodes of sedentary behavior. So there's guidance of both about the amount of activity you should do and also um, guidance on you, how, how much time you should be inactive. So the first thing we wanted to look at was how physically active are people with dementia Given that uh, UK population norms are that around about 60 percent of people aged over 55 meet the government guidance, but that drops to about 40 percent by the time we get to 75 plus. And remember, those are the people who took part in the surveys, so uh, they may or may not be representative of the population. The uh, the evidence for how active people with dementia are is exceedingly poor. Um, there's very little good research uh, published in this field, which we were quite surprised about. But I think the evidence that we have suggests that people with dementia are less active than their peers who don't have dementia. So potentially um, levels of activity may be 15, 20 percent lower than the population norms and sedentary behavior um, much higher. So around about 60 percent of the waking time for people with dementia is spent in sedentary um, activity. So doing nothing. So the evidence base is poor, but it's probably suggesting that people with dementia as a population are less active than their peers who don't have dementia. Um, we looked at, um, again, how, do, how can we increase that? What's the evidence from uh, trials? And because we're all a bunch of public health people, we focused on randomized control trials. So trials where people are assigned to a physical activity intervention, uh, whilst others uh, are, are the control group. And again, we only found around about 13 trials that were of reasonable quality. And I think the consensus from the trials, which often involved very high intensity um, activity. So these are things where people were going and doing circuit training. And there was one study, I believe it's from Canada in Saskatchewan, in a town that, where they effectively were um, getting people with dementia to cycle on these indoor Peloton bikes. And as a review group, we all thought this was crazy because Saskatchewan has really nice forest trails and why wouldn't you cycle outside? But anyway, I didn't, can, I didn't design the trial. I think the, the, the evidence was, was uh, quite over, uh, quite consistent that none of these high intensity exercises, whether it was circuit training, whether it was cycling, um, any of those kinds of things made absolutely no difference at all to either people with dementia's cognitive function, um, it didn't have uh, any great impact on their quality of life. And perhaps if I was stuck in a dark room on a cycling machine that wouldn't improve my quality of life um, either and there was very little evidence that it had benefit for other outcomes in terms of uh, muscle strength um, and there was some minor evidence that it might improve balance but it was 
was very marginal. And then the other area that we looked at was to look at what were people's experiences of participating in, in um, physical activity um, generally. So not the trials, this was general physical activity, things like walking football or going for walks. And the synthesis of the qualitative research, I think, um, again, these are people who participated, um, were that these kinds of activities um, improved uh, sense of well-being in the broadest sense, um, gave people pleasure, supported uh, social connections and, and gave people confidence and, uh, uh, and um, perhaps an opportunity to uh, do something positive in their lives. Carers also had uh, benefit from this, again, by offering connections with other um, carers. So lots of quite good qualitative evidence um, from, uh, from the studies we looked at of people's well-being in the broadest sense being enhanced by those kinds of activities. But I would say that the, the message that, that was really evident to us was actually what really, or no, what really mattered, but a very large contributive factor to the positive experience of people with dementia and their carers in these range of different activities was that the instructors in, instructors or the guides who led the groups had a good understanding of dementia and could tailor what they wanted to do in terms of you know playing football or going for a walk or wherever, wherever it is um, could they could respond to, to the needs of the people mm -hmm. with dementia and um, I guess not surprising within that created an environment that was um, respectful and, and positive. Mm. So, and I'll that, that. that. That leads very nicely into um, um, Emma's talk, I'm sure. Um, I'm just wondering in terms of questions, um, if people have particular questions for each speaker, maybe you can um, um, Put the, put the questions in the chat as we go along and that will be fantastic fantastic but that was that was that was great Christina thank you um so any questions please make a note now and and, um, and write into the chat that'd be fantastic but I'll um introduce Emma now who will follow up on that point I'm sure that you make right at the end about the facilitator being really important and um Emma uh, over to you Hi, yeah. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. It's really great to be here. So um, my name is Emma Quake and I'm the Dementia Coordinator now for Gwynedd Council, but I'm also the creator and um, I lead the Dementia Active Gwynedd um, programme. So I'd just like to explain to you, really take this opportunity to explain to you what Dementia Active Gwynedd is all about. Um, so we started about seven years ago um, and I was actually coordinating the National Exercise Referral Scheme in Gwynedd, North Wales, and dementia just came up as another condition um, to be part of that scheme. But we very, very quickly discovered at the beginning that um, dementia wasn't really like any of the other chronic conditions that we were dealing with, like the cardiac rehab, respiratory, cancer rehab. Um, you know, there wasn't really a very clear pathway that enabled us to have referrals. So we kind of started really um, out on our own with just dealing with, with dementia. And I was very lucky to be given the opportunity to develop the scheme from there. Um, and over the course of the seven years, we've learned an awful lot about how to help engage people who are affected by dementia to join the sessions. Um, and by now, we actually have um, 17 sessions that we run throughout Gwynedd. So these sessions are mainly um, based in leisure centres or community centres. So they're out in the community um, and they compromise of uh, a class where we have very professional and um, compassionate and very qualified instructors um, teaching strength and balance classes, um, ensuring that people help to improve their stamina. We've got all the, the, the functional exercises that we include in the class, but um, really, really importantly, it's all done with a lot of fun, with a lot of flexibility to the class. You can often 
um, plan something, but um, you know things change just because of the nature of the people that we have coming to the classes. Um, so yeah, they they also the really really important element of the class is the half an hour at the end where we have a cup of tea and a chat and a chance for people to talk. Um, and to, to get support from other people that come. So yeah, we've got five staff, as I said, very qualified staff that are running the sessions. They're amazing people, absolutely amazing people. Um, and we are now supporting about 230 people a week. So that's people affected by dementia, um, the person with a diagnosis, the unpaid carers, family members, but we also do preventative classes for older adults. Um, which is, is are proving to be um, very, um, very popular as well. So the classes are going very well. Um, also from the classes, we do specific um, special events which help to raise awareness and gives people something to look forward to. Um, one of our events that we run on a monthly basis, and I must share this with you because it's just an, an incredible um, an incredible morning of activity that we do. I don't know if every, anybody's heard about Boccia, yeah, so boccia is like it's like indoor bowls. It's um, it's a game that anybody can play. You play it seated, and it's very very similar to balls where you you just throw a ball, um, see if you can get it nearest the jack. It's been devised for people with cerebral palsy originally, and it's actually an Olympic um, uh, special Olympics um, event. Anyway, every month we bring people together to compete in a league. So we have people with dementia, we have people with lots of other chronic conditions join us, the Stroke Association are with us, um, people with brain injuries, we have people with learning disabilities, we've even had schools come and join us. Um, and that is just an amazing um, sort of morning of fun, They're really competitive and the, the competitive element comes out, people are being active, people are moving. Um, and for that sort of two hours, there's no disabilities and there's no, you know, everybody's on an even keel and they just want to win. So um, that's just briefly what our classes are all about. We also do a lot of work around raising awareness about dementia and breaking down barriers. But what I'd really like to just quickly go through to just explain, explain things from a, from a practical point of view. We all know the benefits of being physical activity and Christina's just listed those benefits as well. But I think we've seen from, from the classes that we've done, we've seen um, all the different spin-offs that come from these classes that we do as well. I'd just like to, to share with you um, Harry's story to just try and maybe demonstrate why it really is good to keep active when you, when you have dementia, you know. So Harry was referred to us from a falls prevention class. Um, so he joined us to kind of maintain all those, uh, all the back balance and the strength that he'd gone in the class. But um, he didn't feel that any other class was kind of suitable for him. So he joined us over the course of the years. Um, he came to the classes, we took him to the gym, one of, our, one of our instructors took him to the gym, did specific work with him there, and he wasn't a gym bunny, I, I've got a quote from him here, he said he had an absolute phobia of gyms, and um, it was all the overload of, of uh, you know, sensory overload, but because he had the instructor there and the other people who were um, also feeling the same as him, he really, really kind of got over that phobia and really started getting the best out of the gym. And from all this work that, that we, were, we were doing with him and, and, and everything, uh, one of the things that I absolutely loved was that he, his passion was sailing and he'd had to stop sailing. But because he'd gone to these, you know, he was coming to the classes, he's, he'd been able to, to get strength, he'd been able to build confidence in himself he was actually able to go back out on a boat and do sailing, you know, which is something that really, really lifted his heart. Um, and, and that was just a, a great achievement for him. Um, Harry also, he had Parkinson's and dementia. He also suffered quite badly from, from depression. Um, but I think what happened with him being able to exercise with a group of people that, is that it made him feel more confident about being with people. Um, it gave him a sense of purpose and structure to his day and his week. Um, and it brought him out of himself. And I'll just read out something that he did say to us at one point. 
I just don't feel as if I'm suffering from depression so much now. This is the first winter in years that I have not felt deeply depressed. Um, I feel fitter and stronger and I'm just trying to do my best to live with Parkinson's and this dementia. And this is really all down to staying active and joining the dementia active um, classes. So I think, you know, he's just one of the stories we've got. We've got so many that I could have shared with you. And what's really special about um, Harry as well is he's now moved. He's now living in a care home. Um, but and, 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 you know, his, his condition has deteriorated. But the care home now link into one of our online exercise classes. So he's actually able to access. And once he hears Claire, I know Claire's here with us today. You know, Claire was the one that's worked with, with him all through the years. Once he hears Claire's voice, there's often days when he's unresponsive, but he hears the voice, he hears the exercises and he sits up and he actually starts moving again, which again, I think is a really special thing for, for Harry. And, um, and I think it does show the benefits and the importance of keeping going, you know? And I think that's probably my seven minutes, isn't it? I can't, I can't. We yeah. have a tiny bit more flex because um, um, because we don't have that uh, the speaker. So um, that's okay. fine, that's, that's fantastic. Thank you very much. If we've got that just a couple of seconds, can yeah, I just show you yeah. one, one more story? We've, um, we've also worked with care homes. And one of the things we've done over the years, we have a sports day every year where we get care homes to come out to the leisure centers to compete against each other. Um, amazing event, you know, and people really gets involved, get involved. But we had, had um, one of the gentlemen um, who competed because um, we give everybody a medal. Everybody gets a medal for competing. And he actually said he was I think he was 95 years old. And he said it was the only time that he'd ever won anything in his life. And that <laughs> medal meant so much to him. Um, he took it back to the care home and he wore it every single day for a month. Um, he did nothing but talk about it to his family. It gave the family something to focus on. Um, he did unfortunately pass away, but he and the family had requested that he actually get buried wearing his medal. So I think, again, that's just a, another example of how being active, getting out there and doing something um, can mean so much to people, can't it? Hmm, that's a lovely story. Thought I'd finish with that one. Thank you very <laughs> much. Um, I, I'm, I'm, this is for, for later, but I'm interested to know if other similar stuff it's going on elsewhere because you seem exceptional with what you're doing. So I'd be interested to hear from other people about if, if other other people are doing similar things. Um, thank you. That's fantastic. OK, so um, we're going to hear from Bronte next. OK. So, Is that all good? Thank yeah, you. we can see you. Yeah, you're good. OK, um, I did have some slides, so I might flash them up at some point just quickly uh, just to give you an idea of what the feel good folder looks like but um hello everyone i'm bronte um i'm from the alzheimer's society where i'm one of the research evidence senior research evidence officers um so i have the privilege of working on some of the physical activity and dementia stuff because of my work with the innovation team um who have uh, essentially created a new product that they've worked with um, and I'm going to be talking a little bit about that today. Um, so this uh, piece of work around physical activity and dementia came about um, with our partnership with Sport England. So we've been partners with them for over four years. Um, and during that first couple of years, we focused on supporting sport and physical activity sec the sector um, to become more dementia friendly. So like practical guides for the sector. Um, but in January 2021, um, we kicked off a new programme of work um, with Sport England, which enabled us to take a step back from that initial sector focused work and look at the wider picture and consider physical activity in the really broad sense of movement. Um, so not just sport and exercise, as Christina was saying, but like increasing accessibility for physical exercise. Um, so that new programme that started in January of 2021, uh, so two years ago now, um, it focused on three main strands, so research and insight, which we work with Christina on, and then innovation and then influencing. Um, so the first few phase, two phases are complete. So we've um, the research and insight has been done. The innovation has been um, like ideation part has been done. And now we're in that process of scaling up the interventions that we've managed to create 
that I'm going to talk about. Um, so we managed to come together and um, co-create a feel good folder with people affected by dementia. Um, so the innovation team, who sadly can't be here today, they focused on looking at learning, investigating, finding and experimenting to basically try and design a solution that supports people living with dementia to be more active. Um, so we worked with people with lived experience with dementia, Alzheimer's Society staff, professionals working in dementia care, physical activity and behaviour change, um, professionals um, all involved in the different stages of the project. Um, so we completed a, the research side, like the desk review and stakeholder interviews um, to try and get insight into what those key challenges faced people like that living with people living with dementia faced. Um, so I think a lot of this has probably already been covered, but just some of those uh, themes that have already been highlighted around sort of limited, we were getting feedback around limited knowledge of the importance and benefits of physical activity. So even from professionals, people affected by dementia and people affected by dementia. Um, and then there was different perceptions around physical activity. So some people often associated with structured sport and exercise rather than general movement, as we've said. Um, and there was uh, feedback around motivation and levels of social support. So some people having low levels of motivation um, and how their social supported um, affected, their social support affected how active they were too. Um, and then some people fed back on the role of health and social care professionals and when they should be, when people living with dementia would like to be told around about benefits of being active. Um, and they said to us that it would be better at the earlier part of their journey. Um, so what we did with all of this research and insight is that we held sort of like an idea generation group um, and that ended up with developing the feel good folder in summer of last year. So I think it, the, I'll show you just quickly so that you can have a visual, but the feel good folder is essentially a motivational resource um, so it's designed to support inactive um, people living with dementia to be more active or to be active. Um, so it includes information on why we should be active, so like health information on the benefits, and then it also talks about getting started, so behaviour change activities, and um, then it goes all the way through tracking your progress, like we have, I'll show you a feel good activity wall chart, so like a visual way to track progress, um, movement deck, and then also online support, so you can have um, access to a talking to a community of people that are also um, using the feel good folder. Um, so I'm going to flash it up because I think that it's useful to see it visually. Um, so this is the um, feel good folder um, and then this is the activity wall chart there. Um, and then we've got a activity pack, which is here, which is how you set your goals. You plan for obstacles, you decide on rewards for achievement. So we've got that's part of it. And then this is the wall chart that I mentioned. So it's an A3 size that can be put somewhere visible around the home. Um, and it helps to sort of track progress and record achievements. And then the movement deck is something that I also mentioned, which is part of the feel good folder, um, which is a pack of cards that contains activity information and sort of like inspiration for movement. So I'll stop sharing just so then that might be a bit useful to, to see that. Um, so what we have done is we've done a little Ooh, yeah. We've done initial testing um, on the feel good folder. So we did that with people living with dementia in 10 memory clinics. Um, and we found out that 85% of people living with dementia thought uh, about becoming more active and 22% increased their activity level. Um, uh, seven out of 10 people said they were likely to recommend it to others. Um, we found that capability, opportunity and motivation were improved um, and the majority of sites said they would very likely would be very likely or are likely to use the folder beyond the pilot. So we got some really good initial feedback on the use of it. Um, and then um, I'll just sort of explain what we're doing with it now is that we want at the moment we're testing it across um, well, a few more sites and for a longer period of 12 weeks um, to try and understand if and how the folder supports people with dementia to actually be more active. Um, and we want to, by May of this year, have a full evidence and insight report sort of collecting that learning that we've had from the last five years um, and outlining sort of like this disseminating all of the learning that we have had. Um, so we're hoping to launch the Feel Good folder in the summer of 2023, so this year. 
um, as a free resource that's downloadable that people can use to support them, uh, people living with dementia can use to become more active. So that's a quick really run through of the Feel Good folder. And I'm here if you want to ask any questions or put anything in the chat. Thank you. That was going to be my question is where can we find it? So when it is launched, will it be on the website or will it, where will it be? Yes, it will be on the website. So hopefully this, we're going through that final sort of uh, testing and reviewing of it. But by the summer of this year, it should definitely be free to download on the website. And then will there, there'll be a little bit of flurry of activity and a little bit of a promo behind it, presumably? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Great. Obviously, we'll promote it. So that's um, that, that's that's great to hear. Thank you very much indeed. That's uh, really nice to hear something that people can get their hands on and uh, evidence based and all that. So that's that's fantastic. Um, OK, going to move um, on to Jane now um, for for your perspective, Jane. So um, go, go ahead. OK, hello. So my name is Jane Ward and um, I'm an ex-carer. I looked after my mum who had vascular dementia and actually we just had the 10th anniversary of losing mum. Um, I can't believe it's like that long. Um, while I was still looking after mum, um, I did a couple of things. One was that I joined the Alzheimer's Society Research Network. Um, which is a, a group of people with dementia, carers and ex-carers, who really are there as the, the, the sort of patient participation group, if you like, for the Alzheimer's Society, for any re all of the research that they do. And through that, I, um, I got introduced to this project, the Ideal Project. And again, that, that's probably getting on 10 years now. Um, it's been massive and amazing and such a privilege and a great experience. Um, to have been involved in this. Um, I'm also, about 10 years ago, I joined the local Dementia um, Friendly Communities Project. And I now run a small charity called Dementia Friendly Hampshire, which is still driving dementia friendly communities within Hampshire. But more and more, we're looking at how, how do we create opportunities for pe people to get out and to become active? And I'll, I'll talk about that again in a, in a minute. So back to when I was looking after mum. At the beginning of her, her time with dementia, she had vascular dementia, she was still fairly um, kind of aware. In fact, right, right up towards the end, she was very aware of what was going on. Um, we could talk about her dementia. She was quite happy with that. In fact, she, she used it as an excuse to behave quite badly sometimes. She was very naughty. Um, and, she, and she was just bright and cheerful. I was so lucky to have that, that kind of personality that I was looking after. Unfortunately, she'd had a, a congenital hip problem and as we went through um, time, her hip became worse and worse. And it, and it also didn't help that she got lost a couple of times. And one time she was walking for about two and a half hours. I think probably walked further than she should have done on, on her hip. And she needed a hip replacement, but she was really worried about having that because she understood, we talked through the, the risks of a big operation. And she also admitted that the kind of exercise she needed to do, the physio, to get that hip working was probably not something that she would do. It was difficult getting mum to exercise. So how I, I do that was I made sure that she still got up and did all of the, the sort of daily things that you'd do around the house, you know. And she'd always said to me, I'm the mum. So she, she wasn't going to have me wrapping her in cotton wool and looking after her. So get, get up to make a cup of tea. And at one point I was helping to run a local um, care group and we did the Steady and Strong program. I actually sort of became a, a, an instructor for it and realized the benefit of just getting up out of that chair quite a few times of the day. You know, she didn't, she was gonna lose that strength quite quickly and that ability to get out. So, you know, she did, and she'd mutter sometimes, oh, me making the tea again, but then grin at me because she actually quite enjoyed it because it was something she knew she could still do. And, and, you know, she didn't feel useless. She didn't feel hopeless. But the other thing we'd do, we'd go down to the, the coast for walks. We'd go to the New Forest where her grandparents lived. She spent a lot of time, a childhood over there. But particularly garden centres. And garden centres were great because she hated being in the wheelchair. So I'd follow along with the wheelchair. She'd have a trolley and she could walk along and more or less fill that trolley. But it was something that really engaged with her. And she, she would be wandering around and really enjoying that time. And then, of course, all the work putting those plants and it had to be raised beds and it had to be planters by then. But just the activity of leaning forward and putting those plants in, um, I think, was really good for her. So we kept her going as long as we could and even chair based exercise, although she would mutter and moan because she 
didn't see the point of that. Um, I'd learned a lot more now and I'd be really inclined to have got involved with it or, or got in touch with the Gwyneth ladies, and I, I probably will actually, um, just to find out how to get them more motivated. But the other point I, I always say is when I'm talking about activity with people affected by dementia is the carers. It's so easy for us to get so wrapped up in the fact that we are carers and our responsibility is to care. And that's what we should be doing. And we forget about our own health and our own sort of fitness. So I started going to a, a salsa fit class. So think salsa, all the things you see on Strictly in a sort of line dancing formation. And I started going twice a week. Monday evenings, Friday mornings, I still do it. Love it. It's my social group, all the girls. We've, some of us have been going for, it's now about 14 years. And it is great because it keeps me fit. It keeps me feeling more sort of active. So I feel good about me. I'm not just vegging. It also gives me that strength and it, and it gave me the strength when I was looking after mum that I was fitter. So those things that you have to do as a carer, you know, lifting people up, sort of moving them around or helping them to move around. I was fitter doing that. But the other thing it did, and I forgot to mention with mum, even just going out to the nursery, you know, garden nurseries and things, she would sleep better and her appetite would be better when we were outside, when she was moving around more, more interested, more motivated. Similarly for myself, um, sleeping was a problem. The nights when I've been doing the activity during the day, I've always got a better night's sleep. Um, but I think the other thing that we just don't think about is the whole social factor of, as I say, the girls. And I mean, we're all kind of getting on a bit now. We always, in fact, we were then. But it was just meeting up with the, the same people who knew what I was going through. And when I couldn't get someone to come and sit with mum, mum would come along and she'd just sit there with her book and she'd peer over the book and just watch us and make comments about people who should be, you know, should know that they're old, too old to bounce around in Lycra. And, you know, and then she'd laugh, we've got the steps wrong. And, and she really enjoyed that. And, and you know, all of the ladies there, they still talk about mum quite often, you know, some of them, they, they remember her. And um, so, but we both got that social sort of impact. And then the other thing I noticed was as a carer, you can often get sort of so fixated about things and you're so worried about how to solve a problem that you've got and you don't know how to get through it. And you just seem to get yourself into a complete state about it. When I was doing my aerobics, I would often, because I was really concentrating on making sure that I got steps right, so I wasn't bouncing off other people, I'd let go of all the things I was worried about. And I often, coming out of aerobics, I suddenly think, ah, that's what I could do. And it cleared my head and it gave me that complete break from being a carer. And it might only be an hour, but it was so valuable of just that turning off from the responsibility of caring I mean, if mum was there, I was keeping an eye on her, but there were other people actually that, that kept an eye on her for me as well. But I think it's just stopping thinking about dementia and having something like, okay, now what do I have to do? Do I turn? Do I do this? It just let me forget. And, and yeah, my concentration was much better. So I, I'm always saying to carers nowadays, make sure that you do something for you. You're as important. In fact, actually, if you go down, you both go down. So, so the kind of things we're doing with Dementia Friendly Hampshire, we've got walking football, a couple of places, we're just about to start another one. We've got an accessible form of cricket that we play, I think called cage cricket. Um, sounds a bit funky, but actually youngsters play it as well, so it's great that it can be intergenerational, works really well, not a lot of running. Um, we've started working with accessible bicycles in one of our local forests, and that's been brilliant, um, you know, getting people out and, and actually out into the forest on these bikes and we're doing uh, forest bathing as well and anything else we can think of golf in the community we're just hoping to start working with them this year look them up they're great at least they look great um i'll let you know in about a year's time when we start working properly but i'm getting good reviews from other people but anything we can do so thank you that's a really nice perspective so i was just thinking as other people were talking about um obviously provisions for people with dementia and the benefits of exercise for people with dementia but as christina said right at the beginning we can all benefit from exercise for lots of reasons and of course um if uh, the carers are able to get out and be active um obviously fit and healthy psychology stress everything else then that helps uh, yeah. balance out anything that you're dealing with with the person with dementia doesn't it but 
Um, so thank you. That's that's really. Uh, I was just going to say, I think the big problem there is carers' guilt because they feel they're doing something for themselves and sure, they should. Tough. And actually, if you're enjoying a sport, then you can feel less guilty because actually you're doing something for both of you. Yeah, it's. I mean, that's a difficult one, isn't it? I imagine that's something to the, the the idea of respite and time away and time off is probably a challenging one in general. I'm sure. Um, yeah. So are there any questions um, for, thank you very much. Um, any questions for any of the um, uh, speakers from the audience members? Has anybody got any similar experiences or is anybody doing anything themselves that they want to share within the field of um, activity um, for people with dementia or areas around that? Or have any of the speakers got any questions for each other? Can I just um, just reiterate what Jane was saying, really, about it's lovely to hear your, your story, Jane. You're doing some amazing work, really positive. But um, uh, with the carers, you know, because we, we began Dementia Active Gwynedd. It was mainly for people um, with a diagnosis of dementia. But, you know, more the more that we were learning that um, it was the carers that needed that, that support as well, you know? So we kind of now, we tell people that, well, the carers, that they have to stay for a couple of weeks until we've got to know the person, the person's got to know us. And what the idea of that is really is, is that we've hooked them in as well. So by the, you know, after a couple of weeks, they're kind of starting to see, oh, this, this could be good for me as well. So we, most of our classes, they'll have the carers and the person with dementia, and it just works really, really well together. You know, it just um, it's very dynamic, and, and and the carers will just get kind of go towards each other, that veer towards each other. They'll get the peer support from each other. It just works. And if we're doing something like circuit training, we try to make sure that couples don't pair up together. We'll kind of split them. I'm just you know just work like that with it. So yeah, it is. I agree with you, Jane. It's really, really important. That carers get that exercise as well. So, Emma, are there things like, as I asked earlier, are there other things that you know of in in the? I mean, that you're talking, you know, from Wales. I, you sound quite unique to me. You do this something special, and but I mean, the benefits are loads. They're obviously clearly yeah. loads of benefits. Um, do you know of anything else? That's... I, I don't, to be honest with you. I know they've they've tried in a couple of other counties. So we're specific. We're in Wales, but we're in one county in Wales. Yeah. So I know now that you know they're getting to know about us more and and, and the benefits and and everything that um, people are looking at starting up something similar. Yeah. So let's hope that happens. You know, and and dementia active is being um, evaluated at the moment as well so you know if we can start sharing things like that as well hopefully oh, um, other people will yeah not yeah i mean it's it's you know about exercise referral schemes across the country in different in different areas you know for different diseases um what mental health uh whatever heart disease whatever so it sounds to me like this should, should be another um you know another area um Christina, have you got a, a, a question or yeah. a query? I was, I was only going to say that the example from Gwyneth is a real is really nice, but it just highlights how patchy. Um, uh, I don't mean that. Uh, <laughs> you know, there's some really examples of some really good practice, but there are great disparities across the country in access of uh, for people with dementia to these kinds of activities, as there is for the the general population. Um, but you know, so it's 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 yet another example of um, how your experience of living and caring for people with dementia is often determined by where you live and yeah. not what the needs are. So, absolutely, yeah. So I just wondered if any any other people in the audience, if if uh, like I say, if you've got any sort of um, examples of things that are happening or things that you've you know triggered your triggered your interest as we've been going along anything any other sort of comments or barriers I mean barriers is something that people talk about a lot with dementia risk which is a bit of a sad place to be but it's clearly you know it, 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 it's not that difficult <laughs> coming from Jane's point of view you know you take you know take somebody out to do the things they enjoy doing and that's exercise isn't it so I like this idea of um, physical activity you know going away from exercise and and yeah. sport all the way to just getting out of the house to do something that is, is interesting 
uh, which happens to be standing up a bit more than you were before and a bit of fresh air and seeing seeing people's faces. Um, Jennifer, did you have a comment? Well, I just think there's been some very good suggestions. I've been trying to encourage the speakers as they went along. <laughs> but we, where I live in a dementia inclusive, because I have dementia place, we have regular daily <laughs> motivational <laughs> physical activity. You know, it might be exercises, seated exercise. It might be kind of doing kind of indoor bowls. It might be going for a simple walk, but they're absolutely brilliant. So they've got the message. So well done. I'm very impressed. Thank you very much. Somebody said, so I can't remember who it was, maybe it was you, Christina, but somebody's talked about peer support. I think actually maybe Emma, it was you. Um, people don't just benefit from, um, you know, the activity and being outside. But if you're doing that with other people and there's an opportunity with other people, um, then that makes it could make it easier, couldn't it? If you're not reliant on one person or if it's, it's sort of a different, um, more sort of group environment sometimes, that that's, makes it maybe easier somewhat, somehow. Um, any other any other comments from anybody um, in the audience? Um, uh, so Debbie, you've just posted something here. Um, we need organisations to think differently about dementia and considering positive risk taking. Yeah, absolutely. So there's this this issue with risk we've we've encountered in other contexts as well, but um, it shouldn't be it, it shouldn't be a big issue, should it? Really, to try and um, help somebody to um, to get out and about and do things. Um, and to, to, to attend things. Um, um, any other? Oh, the accessibility cycling, you said, I oh, say, Jane, you were talking about recycling earlier. So that's one prime example where, you know, there might be all sorts of risk flags for people going on, you know, people who, you know, go on bicycles, but there really shouldn't be any additional barriers. It's as long as there are relative um, uh, things put in place to make sure that people really, you know, you're wearing a helmet. <laughs> what else, you know? Well, we, we started using the accessibility bikes um, up at it's a place called the Alice Holt Forest. And um, so the first time we got them out was back in the last last summer. We did a couple of sessions last year um, using side-by-side -side bicycles. Oh, right. And actually they were, they were great because, um, well, once I'd realised there was a handbrake, yeah. much easier when I managed to take the handbrake up. <laughs> Didn't think about a bicycle having a handbrake, I'm sorry, but you know. Um, but so it's nice and safe because obviously you're on a side by side, but also there was a social element, particularly when the guy was able to actually laugh at me and he still laughs at me. I said to him, You're supposed to have dementia. You you shouldn't remember that anymore. It's yeah. back in October, but you still remember us not so long ago. Um, but they actually took a group of them out. I I, I wasn't able to go, I had something else on, on Saturday. Um actually you know, two, two weeks ago on Saturday. And I noticed that one of the chaps that we were, in fact, yeah, the one that was on the um, accessible bicycle with me, he and another of our volunteers were actually on electric bicycles, but ordinary bicycles, because he's actually feeling confident enough, apparently, that he's, he's he used to cycle, he's gone on, out on the electric bike. And that's wonderful. And yeah. his wife just said he, he hasn't been on a, out on a bike for years. And just going out was was just amazing for him. I think Jenny, Jennifer just said, yeah, I think people do. Mum mom used to remember all the things, my faux pas, for ages because she just enjoyed it so much. It, it you know, appealed to her kind of happy emotions that, you know, that bit of poking fun at someone. And, uh, but yeah, getting people out in the woods was just incredible. And I think it, there is that risk factor people when I say we're, we're doing the bicycles out in the forest they're all like oh, oh my gosh but the sense of joy that people have of being out in the forest but also because we're out in a group having fun and yeah. it is that emotional risk and social risk that you've got to put against the physical risk yeah the mentor adventure look at their their, their um, risk course it is so good yeah, that that sounds incredible. That, I mean, it it seems to me like uh, it's a, it's a no brainer really, but it, it it's it's getting people to overcome those barriers, I suppose, isn't it? But also on an individual level as well. So people who, like uh, Steve mentioned, that on an individual level, people being worried about asking for help, um, yeah. which is again probably a fairly common thing. But um, it's it's uh, people having that opportunity, it, it and, and not being and not those barriers being in front of them that they they can't uh, overcome. So, yeah. um, um, okay, I think we are 
need to come to a, a, a close. I just um, thank you very much for the speakers. I think it's a, an area that we can all see the benefits. There seem, there seem to be so many benefits um, of, of getting out and about for people who want to and people who, you know, who can. Um, it's, it's finding ways to kind of overcome uh, people's internal barriers with it, I suppose. But um, there's, there are so many options. There are so many possibilities, aren't there? And, and easy ones, actually, fairly easy ones. Garden centre, I love that. You know, just get out and, you know, you're pushing, you're pushing a trolley and you, you're outdoors. So how great is that? Um, OK, thank you very much for coming. Sorry about the little bit of the hiccup at the beginning, but hopefully um, there were some uh, interesting points made and people can take some messages home. And um, thank, you, thank you again for a, a great webinar. Kathy, who's not here, who set this up, who's not very well, but um, um, that, that was great. Thank you very much for, for coming, everyone. And please do come to the other webinars if, um, if that piques your interest in the future.